Hello, welcome to Culture TV. In this video, I'll take you shopping in Russia. And on the way back, we'll stop for lunch at a Russian Stalovaya. We'll be learning some very useful vocabulary in this video, so stay tuned. So this is lesson 53 of our online program, Let's Speak Russian. And so essentially in this video, I'm just going to throw some vocab at you, along with some bits of grammar as well, um, all on the topic of shopping and dining in Russia. I think this is quite important because, let's be honest, if you do get the chance to visit the country, you will probably need to go to the shops or you'll probably need to dine out at some point. And so the words that you'll learn today should come in quite handy. So we'll start off by going to the shops. And of course, just like in any country, there are different types of shops. There is a corner shop, um, you know, round the corner. Uh, there are supermarkets, there are shopping malls and shopping centres, you know, different types. Uh, so in this video, we're just going to have a look at a standard supermarket. In Russia, there are many chains, many companies. This particular one is called Magnet, which I'm sure you can guess means magnet. So I'm just going to take you around the shop and we'll just uh, look at some words, we'll just say what we see essentially. So here we are at the entrance of the shop. Remember in Russian that will be вход. Вход. Okay, that's shown here with the arrows. Uh, now of course the arrows are pointing to the left, to the actual entrance, so this thing here must be the exit. And in Russian, that will be выход. выход. We learned these words in lesson 30. What else is there? Well, you'll need to know when the shop is open. So you'll need to know the working hours. In Russian, as you can see, that will be часы работы. Часы работы. Час is an hour, yes, and then работа is work. Occasionally, you'll come across this phrase, режим работы. Режим работы. They both mean the same thing. And just off the side of the image here, we have a common phrase. Добро пожаловать. Добро пожаловать. Which means welcome. And then these images that we can see here, just some adverts. In Russian that is реклама. Реклама. And this is any advertisement. It could be on the TV, it could be billboards, anything at all that is advertising something that is reklama. Now just a few words about the types of shops um, and what they're called in Russian. Your general grocery store will be called продуктовый магазин. Продуктовый магазин. You can probably see the word продукт. That is similar to the word product in English, but whenever it's used with the word shop, magazine, people are generally referring to groceries and other things that you tend to find in such shops like toiletries, uh, washing powders, detergents, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that is all продуктовый магазин. Of course, you also have supermarkets, supermarket. There is one other word that Russians use to describe a very large shop, usually in a uh, shopping centre, and it will be found with some other shops and other department stores as well, and that is гипермаркет, so essentially a hypermarket, and usually people mean something like this. Okay, let's now go inside and see what we can buy. We'll start off with the fruit and veg section here, uh, fruit in Russian will be fructy. Fructy. Fruit. Just pay attention to the k. Yes? Now, what kind of fruit do we have here? Well, yabloka. Yabloka will be an apple. Apelsin. Apelsin will be an orange. Quite a strange word. You can probably notice the apple at the start. That's where the apple comes from. But the actual etymology of this word is apple from China. And there are a few other European languages. I believe it's the same in Dutch, uh, whereby an orange is just um, described using this word, or uh, apple from China, apelsin. Grusha is a pear. 
grusha. And then lastly, I'll mention the watermelon, which is very common in Russian shops, particularly in the summer, or well, probably only in the summer, and that will be arbus. Arbus. Many Russians are fond of watermelons, and some of them like them so much that they'll refuse to buy them at the shops, and they'll only go to a specific stall at a market where they've already tested what the, what the watermelons are like over there, and so they only ever buy watermelons from that one specific place. Uh, but you can obviously buy them in shops as well. Now, how do you know how much everything costs? Let's talk a bit about money. Remember, in Russian, money will be деньги. Деньги. In the genitive case, hopefully you remember, it will be денег. For example, нет денег. No money, right? Now, you can see all the prices shown here, but how do you interpret them? In other words, what currency is used in Russia? That will be the рубль. Рубль, which is the ruble. Now, just because of the nature of this word, what this noun actually means, we're actually going to use the word ruble in the genitive case more often in the nominative. Can you see why? Well, because it's kind of a unit of measurement, we're always going to use this word with some kind of numerical value. And so therefore, we are going to have to use the genitive case. The plural will be rubli. Rubli, that's just rubles. But if you want to say X amount of rubles, you will have to use the genitive case, and that will be rubli. Rubli. Now, be careful. The way you decline rubli in the genitive case depends on this X amount of rubles you want to talk about. And there are some more uh, separate rules that we'll talk about in the future, um, depending on the amount of rubles you want to say, so the actual number itself. Uh, but for now, just remember rubli. This is most commonly used. Two other words that I'd like to mention, skidka is a discount, and then aktse, aktse is a sale or an offer. It can also mean a stock, uh, so um, in economics, a stock, so stock trading, all of that is aktse. And then lastly, if you want to weigh your fruit and veg, you'll probably use kilograms. Again, if you want to say X kilograms, you will use kilogram. Kilogram. Notice the double M. Okay, now let's move on to the next section. We'll go probably to the bakery, the baked goods part. Um, in Russian, bread will be chleb. Chleb. You'll come across the word vypichka quite a lot. Vypichka. Now, we don't have this in English. Um, I translated it as baked goods, but essentially it's anything that has been through the oven and is made of flour. So bread, buns, um, cakes, all that kind of stuff is vypichka. It comes from the word bitch, and bitch either means a furnace or it is the verb that means to bake. And by adding the prefix v, we're essentially just converting the verb into perfective. Uh, so basically things that have been baked. Uh, we have some very nice buns over here. In Russian, that will be bulichki. Bulichki. There is a culture for this kind of uh, bakery in Russia. Definitely, there are many different types. Uh, I think you can probably do some research uh, yourself because there's just so much to talk about. But I really do enjoy even baking myself sometimes bulichki. Now, one important adjective that you need to remember is svirji. Svirji. And that means fresh. Be sure to ask the baker or the clerk in a uh, shop whether the bread or whatever you want to buy is fresh. Because, unfortunately, uh, particularly in the provinces, you will come across shops where the um, owners are a bit lazy and they forget maybe to remove any... Um, not necessarily stale, but just not fresh goods from the shelf. And so you do sometimes need to just make sure if you're buying something that was baked today. And people will generally reply with either this was baked yesterday or today, or they'll give you a date. But do use this word. Okay, now let's move over to the butcher's section. In Russian, meat will be мясо, мясо, and chicken will be Kuritsa. Kuritsa. 
Now, what types of meat are there? Well, as you can see here at the top, we have svinina, that is pork, and then gaviadina is beef, gaviadina, and then baranina, baranina is lamb. Now, of course, I could now carry on and tell you about other types of meat that there are, but there's no need. And to be honest, many words in this video won't be needed by all of you. So we've now got to this stage in our level of Russian whereby we can learn vocab selectively. In other words, you can choose what you can learn and what you can ignore. You know, I'm kind of trusting you to um, decide for yourselves what you think you will need and what you think you won't. If, for example, I don't know, you're a big fan of meat and you'll be buying a lot of meat in Russia, you will probably need these words. But if not, there's no need. Just remember miasa. That will probably be it for you. Um, so yes, I'm just leaving it with you. You decide what you need. That's perfectly fine. Um, especially at this uh, intermediate slash advanced level of Russian. Now let's move over to the fishmonger section. Ryba. Ryba in Russian is fish. And then more produkty. More produkty. Well, produkty we've seen already. More, I'll tell you, means sea. So yes, I'm sure you can guess this means seafood. So let's move on to the next section. We'll probably go over to the sweets now. Now I have to say that no typical Russian supermarket or shop will look like this. This is probably a specialised uh, confectionery store. Um, never in my life have I seen anything so uh, bright and uh, special. But uh, in any case, confeti will be sweets. Confeti. So that kind of uh, links to confectionery, yes. And then very simply, chocolat. Chocolat will be chocolate. Just pay attention to the reduction there. Uh, and over here, you can also probably just about uh, spot the word skitka, which means what? Yes, a discount, a 20% discount, as we can see. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to all these brands that we can see here. These are all, uh, we'll say, authentic Russian uh, sweet or chocolate brands. One of them, as you can see, Bambayevsky, is way back from 1804. Krasny Aktyabr, Red October, that's a Soviet brand. And they produce, well, proper Russian chocolate or sweets. Uh, so if you are interested in trying um, n not foreign chocolate, but something... Um, especially Russian, then look for these brands. These are probably the leading ones in the Russian chocolate and sweet market. These are the ones that I prefer myself. Okay, so that's probably it for now. I think our trolley is full already, so let's go to the checkout. In Russian, that will be kasa. Kasa. So the checkout or the till. The verb to pay will be platit. Platit. And this is a uh, radical changing verb. Uh, if you conjugate it, it will be ya plachu, ty platish. Yeah, so because the verb ends in it, uh, the consonant alteration happens only with the first person. And then you can pay either by card or by cash traditionally. Now notice how we're saying by card or by cash. So essentially we're paying using something else. We're using an instrument. So therefore, can you guess what case we're going to have to use here? Yes, it's the instrumental case. Kartochka. Kartochka on its own means card. But if you want to pay by card, that will be platit kartochkai. Kartochkai. And then platit naličnami. Platit naličnami means to pay by cash. Okay. One other word, check. False friend here, it does not mean a check, but rather a receipt. And the false friend works in the opposite way as well. Receipt in Russian uh, is not a recept, that is a recipe, but rather check, as we've just seen. So yeah, do be aware of that one there. And uh, lastly, one other phrase that you will probably have to use in some probably smaller shops, and that is skolka stoyet, or skolka eta stoyet which means how much is this, or whatever you want to ask the uh, price of. And now, as promised, I said I'll take you to a stalovaya. Stalovaya. 
Now this comes from the Russian word stall, which is a table. And so this is pretty much a table room or a place with tables. And this is kind of like a cafe or cafeteria is probably the better word. Very common in Russia, particularly they were during the Soviet times, but they are still now. And I really do enjoy having lunch or tea or whatever in places like this because A, they're cheap. B, it tends to be healthy food. And um, it, it, it's also general simple food, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing very special or exquisite. It's just, um, how should I describe it? It's just Soviet food. And by that I mean it's um, just things like porridges, soups, salads, um, meat, um, fish, chicken, nothing, you know, too special. It's just typical standard healthy food that you can get for a quite cheap price in a stalovia. Now, of course, the quality is not going to be at its best. You're not in a restaurant after all, but it's still, yes, it's still good quality. I definitely recommend going to a stalovia, particularly if your budget is not very large. If you do ever go to um, Moscow or St. Petersburg, for example, uh, you can, of course, go to cafes or restaurants, but very often uh, you're you know, you probably will be shocked by your bill at the end. And so if you want to avoid that, I do recommend trying to find a Stalovia. That's literally, do take my advice. Um, maybe uh, you won't necessarily like all the food there. You know, this is Russian slash Soviet food after all. But, you know, it's very cheap and quite popular in Russia as well. I remember that I was in St. Petersburg a few years ago. It was the winter, it was the evening, and I was quite hungry. And so I was trying to find a Stalovia. I was walking on the Nevsky Prospekt, which is the basically the central street of St. Petersburg. And I came across this Stalovia. It was very small and packed full of many people. If you can imagine Russians in their, you know, thick winter coats all queuing up and, you know, stuffed in this small room and waiting for there to be a free space in this Stalovia because it's just so popular because you don't have to pay much and you get good food. So it really is a bargain, I have to say. Um, and of course, that's not to say that all Stalovias are packed. Uh, very often they'll be empty. It depends where you go. But I, I just think it's a great place to, um, yeah, to have your lunch or whatever. Again, in schools, yeah, you'll probably recognize this from schools, a school cafeteria. Russian children also call their um, d uh, dining halls at school Stalovia. Yeah, it's the same idea. Okay, now let's just have a look at some general vocab related to dining. Restaurant, quite simply, is a restaurant. Café is a café. Tsena is a price. And then the verb to order, zakazavach, zakazavach, or zakazat, in the perfective, that means to order. And then one great phrase that is present in all European languages, but not really in English, and that is Priyatnava appetita. Priyatnava appetita, which means enjoy your meal. Um, in English, we don't tend to say this, but in Russia and in most of the European countries, as far as I know, uh, most people tend to say this before a meal. Shot, shot is a bill. Just pay attention to the pronunciation, it's different to the spelling. And then in relation to tips, that will be in Russian, chievuye. Chiavuya, which comes from the word chai, which is tea, the drink tea. Uh, in other words, you're giving the waiter some extra money for their tea. And in terms of the culture of tipping in Russia, well, it's not absolutely necessary, not at all. Um, it's a totally a voluntary thing. Um, but I'd say if you are going to tip, only do this in restaurants. Definitely don't give tips in a stalovia. That's just funny. Um, only in not necessarily posh places, but yeah, cafes and restaurants mainly. You don't have to at all. As I say, it's optional and it doesn't have to be anything ridiculous or astronomical either. Just five, ten percent of the bill or even just rounding up to the nearest whole number. That's perfectly fine as well. The waiter and uh, owners of the um, restaurant will be very grateful. And then a waiter actually will be a fitzant or afitsantka for a waitress. Just be careful, the spelling is not the same as the pronunciation. We do not pronounce the E after the T. It's just afitsant. 
Okay, now some other useful phrases that you might have to use with the waiter or waitress. You could say мне, and then whatever you would like. Пожалуйста. So, I'd like this for me, please. Notice how we're using the dative case, мне. Don't say для меня. That just sounds wrong. I don't know why, but in Russian we say мне whenever we're ordering something. You could also say я буду, which means I'll have. If you're dining out with some other people and they order the same as you, you can then say и мне тоже. И мне тоже. And for me as well. Дайте пожалуйста. Дайте пожалуйста. Give me or give us please, maybe the bill. You could say дайте пожалуйста счет. Дайте пожалуйста счет. And then the last question for today. Что-нибудь еще? Что-нибудь еще? Что-нибудь, as you should know, means something. It can also mean anything. That's what it is in this case. And then еще. Very useful word with loads of different meanings in Russian. You'll see it crop up quite a lot and we'll explore it in more detail very soon. But for now it means else in this case. So essentially anything else. And so I'm going to pose you the same question. Is there anything else that you would like to know? If so, then please ask in the comments. I will definitely reply. Um, anything at all about Russian or this video, any words or vocab that you're interested in. Uh, yeah, all down below or you can send us an email as well. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time. Goodbye.